Welcome to Rotor Riot. I'm Joshua Bardwell. And I'm Cricket. Cricket loves to build quads. And I would say you love to build more than you love to fly, but I've seen you fly this weekend. And stop, stop being so good. <laughs> you, stop it. I just like just building it. them. <laughs> but Cricket has brought a smorgasbord of different frames. You don't just build the same frame nine times. You brought, what do we got here? I got a Johnny. Johnny FPV. I got a Ladrib. Skyliner. Skyliner. I got a Stingy. Stingy V2. V2. Yep, V2. We got a Remix. Remix. And then a Schizo. Schizo. And I threw in the mix because we, I just like, we have so many different frames here and you were sitting around talking about what you liked about one versus the other and I was like, this is a video. So let's start with the Schizo. Schizo Nova. Okay. So this is a Supernova with the thicker arms. So this is one of the coolest things about this frame, I think, which is the arms uh, come together, right? And of course they're bolted on. Mm -hmm. But then it's got this kind of spiral pattern. Like a locking system somewhat in the center of there. Which actually works out pretty good from stopping your arms from actually turning when you hit a tree on one side, how some mm -hmm. arms spin. That is completely eliminated. And a lot of times you'll see they'll have like, you know, two screws, mm -hmm. right? But then and you got a lot of leverage, you got a lot of torque, yep. and you can break those screws. Quickly. Yeah. Now he hasn't, and so this locking system kind of, the arms all just kind of reinforce each other. Yep. It's pretty slick. And they also did the, with the standoffs. Right. So the other thing that he's done, so this screw here, is that right? Yes, goes all the way through the arm, through the bottom plate, and then to the standoff. Up into the standoff. So you got three screws here, yep, and as as we know from building construction, triangles are ultra strong. Yep. So we got a triangle of force here. Oh, so you broke the arm. Yes, but, but you have nothing that's ever been nice. torn away from the center. Nice. Which most frames, a lot of frames do, but I guess we'll get to that as we work our way down <laughs> yeah. a lot. What else stands out for you about this frame? This frame, I like that he actually made it so that you can get as little or as much camera tilt as you want out of it. Uh, a lot of the new frames, or different frames, which we'll get to later as well, don't allow you to get zero, or even if you want to do negative five or whatever you wanted to out of the frame, where this one you, you can, and that's one thing I like. Cause yeah, I cause Schizo, when we did the episode where we flew each other's quads in Atlanta, you were there for that. Yep. Yep. Schizo flies with a relatively low up tilt, and so do you, about 15 degrees of That's up tilt. That's about 15 now. I was flying zero at one point, so this was perfect to actually be able to get zero out of it. Mm -hmm. A lot of frames will assume you're going to want at 10, least like 15, 15 20 yep. degrees, and they just won't even cut the carbon to let you. do it. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking, guys? So if you're a juicy style pilot who flies with low up tilt, this could be for you? That could definitely be for you, and it's light. That's a very easy frame to build, very self-explanatory. Uh, one thing I'd have a little gripe about is why can't we make all the arms symmetrical so that we can have one right. arm for any side left right back front and this frame actually went for a a and b side so you have to have an a or a b arm for your left or your right and the reason for that oh no this one's the locking me mechanism it's a locking mechanism set. right so you can't just swap an arm by flipping it up so you can't flip it over no so that you have to you have, have, to have so your spares or left arms and right arms exactly. or A or B. Good thing is though they do sell it in a kit of two. Yeah. Instead of selling just one but arm. But you're in the same it. situation, you're always in with props. Yes. You break an A arm and you only then have you spares of the B one. arm. Universal parts are, are easier to maintain. So That's easy to build, easier. pretty standard build, a slam deck, standoffs. Everything you know, fits not well. a complicated build. It's not really cramped. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of space to do everything you need to do on it. Okay. Let's move on. You want to do the Johnny? Let's do the Johnny. Okay. First thing I noticed about this frame is that it's really kind of trim and light. And light. Small. I mean, it's just a small... It's a beautiful frame. It's, so I noticed that it's got a similar sort of locking mechanism. There's a screw yep. right here in the middle. The arms come into the middle and they actually have one screw that sandwiches them together in the center. So there's like a washer? Well, yeah, so, sort of like a washer. Between the top compresses. plate and the bottom plate compresses them together. Now, from the factory, it doesn't come with the middle four screws here. Oh, okay, so you've added these screws with the nuts. Yes. And why did you add those? Because I went through some problems with durability, where if I were to hit a tree, like we were talking about with the schizo, where they lock into the center and they can't move, mm -hmm. these don't have that option. So the arm would like fold the up? The arm yeah. would fold quickly. Okay. So I just did, I mean, all these frames, if you see something that you need to switch or you want to change it, this is what the hobby's about. If you see something that's lacking in one area, you can add something to it to make it stronger. It's more of a, for me, it's more of like a cinematic rig. You're not going to go out and smash bandos with it every day. But if you're looking for some nice parts, well, that makes sense because that's the kind of flying Johnny does. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that Johnny doesn't crash. I'm sure he crashes and, yes, and he probably. blows up. It's just like anybody. 
but he's really very focused on cinematic, mm -hmm. and this this might be a quad that's more tuned towards cinematic than like bando slaying. Exactly, and these frames are all signature frames, so they're built for a particular person. This is what they intended to fly like, and this is what they right. wanted. That's worth keeping in mind as you start thinking about getting a frame. You know, think about uh, somebody like Jeff Orta is going to design a different frame than somebody like Johnny, just because they do different kinds of flying. So I think we should talk about durability. We did that for the other frame. I think we should do it for all of them. Durability, ease of maintenance. This is another one that did the, uh, have to be an A or B arm. So this is okay, one so that you can't have, and I guess you could show them the reason. Yeah, so is. he didn't drill out the, the shaft holes here. Which is smart and... Keeps dirt out of the shaft and the, the bearing. Which I like. But it does mean you can't just flip the arm exactly. over and have it be so either that means side. you're into that. You have to buy two arms regardless, and then every time you break one arm, you have to buy another two arms just yeah. to make sure that you have them. But as far as ease of maintenance goes, I mean, it's, again, it's a pretty standard Same build. Frame. Standoffs, top plate, yeah. bottom plate, Very relatively easy. few parts, relatively roomy, not a slam design. Johnny actually likes higher standoffs. I, he commented once on Facebook. I've never heard that. He thinks they fly different. Let's, speaking of a band <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of a Bando Slayer... <laughs> Speaking of a Bando Slayer, let's go a completely different direction than the svelte, light, yeah. delicate, delicate, Johnny frame. <laughs> let's delicate. Get, this is the uh, Skyliner. This Skyliner. is Drew's frame, and yep. Drew is a Bando Slayer. Tell me the truth. Don't, don't pander to Drew. Give me your thoughts about this frame. I haven't broken it. That, to me, it means a lot, if I haven't broken it. Wow. And I've actually built all of these and flown them very hard to see what does break and what doesn't. You, and I can attest to that. One of Corey's signature moves is the backwards gap. So he'll fly up over something and then just drop down into it. And as you can imagine, you miss a lot before. A lot, yes. You hit some amazing <laughs> ones, but you miss a lot. When and you, you crash, just keep crash, crash the crap out of it. So you'd say it's, it is durable. Yeah. Anything stand out to you about the design? How about this front end? The oh. front end is pretty distinct, the it way is. he's done this. Kind of like a chameleon, but with carbon. Exactly. That is a big point of it. I do like the way the cameras protect it. Mm -hmm. And I also like that design that they're doing with the um, standoffs for your flight controller. Mm -hmm. I think all the X-Hover guys are doing the rubber, so I guess it would be triple soft mount because there's rubber uh, grommets that go in here. Well, we can't see that, can't but see there's it. grommets in here but holding the... the for the flight controller. Okay, wow, so the, the whole flight control stack is soft mounted. Have you ever had one of those, because some people don't like to do that because they worry it'll break or not be strong enough. No, I use one long M3 screw that goes okay. through the whole thing. Okay, so you, do, you don't use, I see that, you don't use the individual standoffs. And this is another frame that I was telling you about where I can't get zero tilt out of it. Yeah, it's true. So it's only we, made for like, I don't know what the lowest amount of tilt you can get out of it. But. Yeah, we got the, the standoff here. Now this helps durability and front end crashes because it, it helps keep the front end together, but it does limit the amount of up tilt exactly. you can get. It is also sized for a big for a big camera, Which a full size camera. I like full size cameras. You do. Yes. You don't like the micro no. cameras. I don't see you're not saving that much size. Because yeah. if you look at it in a lot of frames that you do use the mini or micro camera, you still have to put that plate on the back of it. You know? Some of them. Some I mean, if we look at like the, yeah, the Johnny, you don't. If we look at the Johnny or the Schizo, a lot of them are built. I just think the pictures better. You like minis? I like the micros. It's the same sensor, and if you get an M12 lens, it's the same no, lens. No, I do the M12 lens. Made so then, at that point, it's the same package, just in a smaller case. How about ease of build? Ease, ease of build, ease of maintenance. Build, yep. yep. I was a little nervous about the uh, the arms because they're thin and wide, but mm -hmm. they are kind of wide, a little wide. The trend has been towards thinner arms and thicker and thicker arms, so that if you want the durability, right, you go we'll thicker, so you have less. Drew's always got to be air different, column. though. Here, let's do this guy. Now, this guy takes us into the... This is the remix. Yes. That's Tommy's frame. Do. And this takes us into the realm of frames that I think of as too freaking complicated to even... I mean, it's a beautiful frame. It is. It's an amazing design. <laughs> what, you can do, what you do is you just turn it upside down, and then this part opens... It's actually unscrewed right now, isn't it? Yep. It just be. opens up like a hood of your car, and just you can just get... A, Ease of that magnets. is so cool. Yep. I am so impressed with that. I love it. And yet, there are... if When you first go to build one of these, you dump it out of the bag, and there's 800 little press nuts and parts and fiddly... That'll confuse you a little bit. How is this frame in terms of... Let's start with durability, because a lot of times complicated things are not durable. Okay, durability-wise, I did have some issues with breaking a lot of arms, but they ended up switching to the 5mm arms. Fixed everything. 
So okay. I haven't had a problem with breaking. It is an issue I've heard. That was an issue. Yes. Other than that, he's put a lot of thought into this frame, frame versus anybody else's frames. You can tell there was a lot of thought and a lot of this that that mm -hmm. went into it. Where most of these frames are nobody, traditional. Nobody looks at this frame and goes, "Ah, oh, it's just a rip off mm -hmm. of exactly. something." So durable, yes. Ease of build. Durable, yes, but it's not the most durable frame. Not the most durable. If you're just getting into it and you're just starting to fly, this is not a frame that I would recommend to you. And I think it's got to be one of the harder to build frames yes. in terms of like the other ones. It's just like standoffs, bottom yeah, plate, top plate. Self explanatory. So this one, you kind of need to follow Tommy's video. I've heard some of the rotor riot guys say the first time they build this, they just have to follow the video step by step. <laughs> So maybe this shouldn't be your first frame. No. I've built about six of them, so they're easy to build now. Yeah. But for anybody just getting into it, it'd probably be a little difficult for you. One other thing I've wondered about this frame is that with the battery on top, and the battery is, and they've moved the motors up to the Prop top. So, the and it helps centralize the mass around the thrust line. The CG levels are like spot on. But I've worried about the battery shifting and maybe getting into the props. Have you had that happen? No. I fly with the long battery long ways not toilet to toilet, toilet. toilet tank right. toilet tank is how it was designed to be flown okay but i actually you fly, fly with it long ways yep. and it, you haven't had a shifting you are using the umma grip best grip you can possibly get okay. <laughs> if you don't want your battery to move get that next so this is the stingy v2 let's yes, just sir. give it a look now one thing i noticed about the stingy v2 is that it looks like he is using the stack screws that double as his arm screws so that actually he does it doesn't? No, it was made to be 20-20, 20 by 20. Oh. And remember I was telling you about the recessed... Uh, I see, this bushes. is an X hover frame yes. as well. So it was made for 20 by 20, but I actually used a 30 by 30 stack for it. So if you're going to use a 36 millimeter stack, you are going to use, these are the arm screws, and they're yeah. going up through the stack. Exactly, just do a long screw, go right up to the top. And there is an customer. issue with that, that if you have to replace an arm, you got to back that screw all the way out of your stack. But that's the only screw you actually have to take out. There is no washer or anything in between that. You don't have to take this screw out? Does well, that not go through the arm? Does, yeah. yeah, okay. I meant for the flight controller. I got you. So that's something some people are going to dislike. I feel like that's like the minimal thing you have to worry about for the most part on that frame. Easy build? Very easy. Yep. Okay. Top deck, bottom deck. Yep. Arms lock in. Strong. Yep. Super durable. You got enough room up here with the GoPro mount? Yep. He what did, stands out about this frame for with you? With the uh, front camera, he did use the mini or the micro, mm -hmm. but he actually made a 3D printed part in there. Mm -hmm. If you notice, it only has one bolt on top and on each side, but you cannot move the camera one bit. It locks in it locks at any. in through the 3D mount. Now, for GoPro mounting, you are going to need this 3D printed part. So, it yes. doesn't, if we look at something like the Skyliner, it has built in up tilt. You could strap a GoPro right on there. Drew if you uses. had a session. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. You had a session. This guy's going to need some kind of a couch, a foam couch, yeah. or a 3D printed part. That's not too unusual, though. I think the 3D mounts are the way to go anyway. If you're going to fly with, the, really with a 7 or something like really that, are. or a 6. Yeah. You might as well just go ahead and spend a couple extra bucks so you don't have to worry about it just ejecting. The last one. The last one on the list. This is mine, and I want I wanted to get this in here as well, just for variety. This is the Catalyst Machine Works Smooth Operator, and it is Catalyst Machine Works. They traditionally build racing frames, but okay. it's their take on a freestyle frame. So it's a top mount battery, and it is even more than a slam design. It's a lot it of stuff going on there. Ultra slam. So the advantage is you get a lot of centralized weight, but the disadvantage is it is a pain in the butt to build. It looks like it. It You cannot just pick at your favorite flight controller and stick it in there. You have to think about what's gonna fit. So is it, you can only fit one board in there. So that's the ESC up front and the flight controller in the back. And then there's a plate that comes off here that you can use to access the receiver and the VTX. So now, how does that feel with the flight controller being in the back of the quad? I've never so flown the, anything like that. The flight controller being away from the center of mass is not going to matter unless you're flying in angle mode. Okay. Um, the gyro detects degrees of rotation, which is the same for every part of the quad, so for every part of it. So there would be no disadvantage to, or no. advantage of having a flight controller centered versus it being... If you fly in auto level mode, yes. If you fly in auto level mode, then it's detecting acceleration and the acceleration at the center is zero, and the acceleration at the outside is different. It's going to be different. But nobody's flying this in auto level mode. Nobody. <laughs> and the difference for a couple centimeters away from the CG is actually not that much. This frame also falls into the realm of, similar to the Remix, super fiddly. There's a thousand parts, different screws. 
it is a pain in the butt to build. You're also struggling to get the electronics in and so really you gotta be tight with your soldering. As far as durability goes, I mean, this one is broke because we flew See the that. most destructive site in the world yeah, yesterday. Everything is gonna break as well. I think some people are looking for that frame that's just not gonna break and everything is gonna break. I mean, you're throwing something that's 40, 50, 60 miles an hour into concrete, metal, it's gonna break. Yeah. So if you go into, if you buy something thinking this frame is never gonna break, you're already starting off on the wrong foot of things. It's gonna break. Yeah. It's just when it's gonna break is the question. The thing that stands out to me about this frame is that when it breaks, well, <laughs> so like the front strut broke and now I'm gonna have to replace the front strut. And to do that, it's just two screws. So that's okay. not too bad. But if I wanted to replace this front end here, the camera plates, I have to take, it's a little hard to see, but I have to take these screws out and the whole front end comes apart and there's seven different carbon pieces. And the other thing is that we've got a lot of, you know, the, the Catalyst Machine Works is not afraid to design the frame exactly how they want it. So we've got these screws here with washers on top of them. And as I'm fiddling around in the field trying to change an arm, you're we're gonna we're gonna drop a washer. It's just a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. There. So maintainability on this, they've done their best to make the maintainability as high as possible with this removable plate. But I really would not want to swap this arm in the field. <laughs> and if you have to say that, then then it's not free. because because here's the thing: when you're at a race, mm -hmm. you probably have. I mean, people go to races; they have tables. tables yep. and, when you're at a bando, you you're bag. just literally standing out there in the middle of a dusty field, sometimes with homeless people wandering around. A lot of homeless people. You don't have a table, <laughs> you don't, you're just kneeling down in the grass with your soldering yeah, iron. I agree with that. And this is just not the frame for that. I would want to build like five of them and then just when one breaks, just throw just it in a bag yeah, and, and, grab another and fix them at home. <laughs> this is a frame to fix and work on on the bench. For sure. I want to do a recap. Which are your favorite? Mm -hmm. And when do you fly each one? And I want to kind of rate them in terms of durability, ease of use, and flight handling, which we haven't talked about yet. They all fly very much the same, besides the Remix. So the re what's different about the Remix? It's just something about the way it handles turns. It's hard to explain what's different about it, but if you were to fly this, one of these, yeah. and then go right to this mm -hmm. one, it just feels... I think it's the way the weight is it's centralized, maybe? It's set up, for sure. Okay. 100%. But for everything else, I mean, everything's on the exact same flight controller, exact same ESC, exact same motors, besides the schizo. You don't have to change your rates or anything? Because, I mean, like, I would think something like the Johnny with lighter weight, maybe Pure X versus Stretch Dex. That for me, see. personally, I fly all the same rates every There you go on everything. I don't do any type of tuning differently for this one to that one or this one to that one. Yeah. I'm going to inappropriately eject something. It inject something about the Remix and the FPV feed looks different. That has the camera <coughs> below the prop line. Oh, good point. So everything else, when you roll, you're swinging like this. This, you're like, mm -hmm. you're, dead. you're like penduluming the, the camera view. Awesome. It definitely feels a lot different though, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It feels like... like oh, I love having one. It's not my main rig, but I love having it. Just when I'm like, I, I need to feel something different, you know? So they fly, they kind of fly the same. And I gotta say, I've noticed this too. The fl I think that it speaks to how flight controllers today have just gotten so good at making the quad do what it's told yep. to do that I think it matters way less than it used to. I think so as well. I think it's about what durability is the main one, what, what you're actually doing with the quad. If you're flying parks all day and you're not really getting crazy with any small gaps, any of these frames are perfectly fine and will do everything you needed to do. Um, if you're getting more into the bando situation, I would go with these two. The, uh, the Skyliner the and sky the Skit Stingy. Because those two have been holding up pretty damn well. Okay. But you can also see the people that made these two frames mostly fly bandos and concrete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do more of a cinematic the Johnny and trees and things like that, I would go with the Johnny and the Schizo. And the Schizo also stands out because it lets you do the low up tilt. Right, and that's another thing. If you're trying to these do are that those juicy. two that you can do the low up tilt on. Johnny also a juicy exactly. style pilot. And the same. remix with the five mil arms, I mean, you can, if you're kind of a seasoned pilot, you can run that wherever you would want to. Not ideal for bandos, but I flew that in the bando yesterday and didn't have an issue. That's interesting you say that because, again, it goes back to the idea of think about who designed the frame. Mm -hmm. Tommy is a very, very experienced pilot. Not that he doesn't crash. He's but super smooth. He, and he's a very controlled pilot. He's not the kind of pilot who will just throw himself at exactly. a gap 500 times until he explodes or gets it. Are you saying something? No. Well, I'm actually thinking of Drew. Okay. So many times <laughs> I've seen it and everybody's done. Everybody's done. They're ready to go. And Drew has the eye of the tiger, as he calls it. And he's just determined to get a trick. And I actually respect that about him. I'm not making fun of him. And he will get the trick. 
and it will be awesome. And all of his quads will be in 700 pieces, <laughs> and then he'll spend the next two to three hours repairing them. Tommy, that's not do that. the pilot Tommy is, and that's not the frame he designed. Mm -hmm. Very so interesting. These, these frames are designed for the pilot that designed it. I still haven't decided about this one. I probably wouldn't build one of those here's for the, me he, personally. Here's the thing about this one. It, I respect what Catalyst has done with it so, so much. It is such an original design. And I do like the idea that it's hyper slammed and that increases durability. There's other things about it that are really cool. But the maintainability, having to keep spares, if you think about something like a Chameleon TI mm -hmm. with the with the metal front end, the titanium front end, how is that going to compare to, like, just because I happen to have broken the front end? I mean, I got to say, this was a hard, hard crash straight into a metal I-beam. But I found myself thinking a Chameleon TI would have taken that. Do you think so? No, you cannot break that front end. Uh. Everything breaks. Everything breaks. Yes. That's true. I just think this has, this would be the type of frame that when you order one, you'd have to order two. I agree. You'd and want just some frames are like that. You just need to order two and not even build one and that just be mainly for all parts that you need. All right. Well, I did just notice something differently What's about that? this. The, the arms are on different. You didn't the rear arms, that. The rear arms are higher than the front arms to keep the rear motors out of the prop wash just a little. That's, 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 a that's big, interesting. That's, that is pretty interesting. Yeah. I love the camera mounting. It's flat. It's flat. So it comes in and I it's protected. I would build something like that for long There's range. so much about this frame that's right. If they need to do a seven inch long range version of this. They maybe are this isn't a, maybe they should. That's what I would Maybe this I isn't a bando slayer. That's not a freestyle frame in my opinion. That is going to do it for our roundup of all of these frames. There are links to all these frames down in the video description if you want to, you know, find out more about them or if, God forbid you want to buy one of them. Yeah, they're down there in the video <laughs> description. Thank you, Corey. Not Cricket FPV. You get better and better at freestyle and I'm not just saying that because you're here. Thank stop you, it. Sir. You stop it. You make me look <laughs> Thank <like> you, sir. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. What do you think of these frames? Have you had a good experience or a bad experience with one of these frames? Tell us down in the comments because we want to know. Just post those things that you feel like you can do differently or made the frame stronger in any way, shape, or form because somebody else out there might need that exact same point or tip. That's going to do it for this episode. Gonna we got to get out of this Airbnb.